Hey, dudes, how's it going? In case you couldn't tell, my hair is pretty much almost back to normal. It's like one more centimeter of getting cut and it'll be brown again. So I figured I'd ask you guys, should I should I dye my hair again? It's up to you. Should I dye, should I dye it light again? Let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm hungry, people. I am hungry. Robert, what are you hungry for? Well, my friend, I'm hungry for an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Why not, right? It is time to watch the resident comics boy himself. We always have fun with this dude and I just thought it would be fun to do part three. There are still some serious classics that we have yet to watch. Two sisters. I no longer care for sports. I usually try to save spiders. ADHD, but medicated. Are we gonna watch all four of these in this video? Probably not, probably not. I'll see what I can get to, but if if this video gets over like 15,000 likes, then I will do another ice cream sandwich video. But for now, two sisters. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll cut that voice out of the rotation. I'll cut it out. I have not seen this video, despite what this red bar may make you think. I probably clicked on it to try and get the thumbnail image or something, but I ain't seen it. But I'm about to. So people, strap in Robert IDK ice cream heck flipping sand man. Three, two, one. A uh, good slap from the sister. Youngest in the family, raise your hand. <gasps> Look at the baby. I'm 30. Being <laughs> that is like so close to being relevant for me. Look at the baby. I'm the youngest in my family and I'm almost 30. I ain't 30, but I almost, almost. Banger intro. Being the youngest in the family comes with its pros and cons. The pros, you get a lot of attention, you get pampered, and people are pretty easy on you. Usually after having a couple kids, the parents are tired, so they put less restrictions on you. Like getting a cell phone at 10, but your siblings had to wait till 15. True, 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 true. Yeah, my older brother got grounded so much, I like never got grounded in my entire life. <laughs> the cons. I have two sisters in my family. One of them is older than me, and so is the other one. We've <laughs> had some good times, and we've had some bad times. But through it all, I love them like they're my own two sisters. Wait, this is Becca. <laughs> she's the second oldest sibling, and she likes makeup, and she's really, really good at art. This is Krista. She's the oldest sibling. She likes murder mystery podcasts, and she's really, really good at knowing about murder. Hey, where did she go? <laughs> hey! And then there's me. I like to draw. Make good pancakes. You make really good pancakes. Aww. Aww. Should I put that in? Yeah. And I make really good pancakes. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, this video's, I'ma keep it real. This video's got the cute factor on lock from the start. Very cute video, Andy. You make good pancakes. Is it just me or is every girl of a certain age range into unaliving mystery podcasts? A lot of it's like true as well. You can listen to what you want, but I'm just, I'm blown away by how many women I meet who just love hearing about people stabbing. I don't know which words uh, YouTube doesn't like, so I'm avoiding, <laughs> you know? People just love that for some reason. It ain't me, but that's okay. Pancakes, I prefer pancakes. Beck and I got along pretty well when I was younger. It wasn't impossible for us to butt heads every once in a while, but we were cool most of the time because of our mutual appreciation of art and Pokemon. We became art buddies pretty early on because she drew a lot and I thought that was cool and I wanted to draw too. That's part of how I got into comics. I started doodling on my own instead of with Becca, then drawing and reading comics, and eventually making ice cream sandwich comics. Hey. And now, this. You, watching me. Me. Talk to you. Watching you. Thanks for the shout out, Andy. Ah! Chris and I have a good relationship now, but back in the day, the rivalry was strong. The rivalry, the rivalry. The rivalry was real. Rival, red, red, was real. Red, 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 red. She would pull pranks on me, is what I'm trying to say. For example. What? How could this go wrong? Do ants poop? Hey Andy, come here. Why are you, what? I bet you can't fit into this box with the top closed. I can do that. Hmm, doubt it. Okay, check this out. So she saved that colony of ants from being messed with by you. So, so far I'm kind of on her team. I really thought this prank was gonna have something to do with ants. Like she was gonna shove his face into an ant hill or something. I'll take this, I prefer this so far. Check this out. 
I love going into boxes and getting rolled around. See? Like a glove. Bet you feel stupid now, huh? He's about to get rolled Krista. around. Krista? Krista? Oh. <laughs> she let me out before I died, which was nice and surprising. I'm not sure why she did it, but I am sure that it spawned a powerful claustrophobia inside me. Yay. Not everything my sisters did hurt me. Uh, sometimes it hurt me but with a benefit. For example, when I was a little baby, before I could even speak, my sisters and I would have breakfast together and watch Saturday morning cartoons on the telly. Usually breakfast was just cereal, and it was the rule that you just had to finish your milk after you ate your cereal. For some reason, as huh. kids, we didn't like to do that. Good job finishing your cereal. Now don't forget to drink your milk as well. Yeah, okay, okay. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that. It kind of makes sense, but at the same time, milk from sugary cereal is just like extra sugary milk and it tastes kind of, I don't know, like it tastes like too much sugar to me, you know? Like if you have a cereal that isn't just like pure sugar, like most cereals that kids eat, then drinking the milk probably wouldn't taste as weird. But for me, I don't know guys, I I ate way too much sugar as a kid, for sure, a thousand percent. But as I got older, too much sugar started to like taste bad to me. It's like, yeah, this like like my body hates that I'm doing this, and so I've learned to not. Which, by the way, a like low sugar cereal company, like a healthy but good cereal company, reached out to me a while ago to do a sponsorship, and I just like never got around to it. I think I should reach out to them. I haven't done a sponsorship in like a year and a half. What am I doing? Just doing this for free. What the heck? Let me know if you want to see me uh, get, be sponsored by a cereal company. That'd be cool. Now don't forget to drink your milk as well. Yeah, okay, okay. No! What the, what the heck? They're so mean. What the heck? Good job, girls. Andy, finish your milk. No! No! And you were too nice to do anything about it? How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. Because I couldn't <laughs> say anything. I was ready. I was ready. I was... No, you can't say I wasn't ready. My favorite Canadian pop punk rockers from my childhood. Another day is going by. I'm thinking about you all the time. And because I couldn't say anything, I couldn't defend myself. But joke's on them because it taught me to always drink my milk after my cereal. Good. And now, I'm tall. I was... Drink your milk. I was gonna say that. I was gonna be like, are you tall now? Is he tall? I don't know. But yeah, fam, real talk. Milk is like the one food that can potentially affect your height because of the hormones in it. Just so you know. Sometimes, Krista would prank both Becca and I, because you know, that's kind of the role of the oldest. She calls us into this side room and shows us this very large bottle of uh, off and tells us she found it in mom's and dad's secret oh, stash. No. Uh, which they didn't have, but we were young and we believed anything. She said that she was gonna drink it, and even though Becca and I didn't know anything about alcohol, except that you got it for free in church with a little <laughs> bread, but outside of religion, it was strictly for adults and drinking it was absolutely off limits. Do you dare me to do it? Reasonable. Krista, Krista don't do it. If you do it- Oh, is she joking that it's, it's water or something? She's capping. Oh my God! I emptied it out. It was just water. Yeah. Okay, yeah. at this point I should just expect it. That one's on me, guys. I think the moral of the story it is that cap. Krista was really good at pranking us. Like, if she committed a crime, she'd probably be able to get away with it. Well, everyone knows about Krista and her cap. That's why her, they call her Krista Cap. That was her nickname in high school. Like, if she committed a crime, she'd probably be able to get away with it. Thievery. Murder. All in all, we had our spats, but everyone goes through that. My siblings and I grew out of it pretty easily, I'd say. In conclusion, I love my sisters. Both Becca and Krista. Krista? Oh no. Krista? Krista! All right, slapper. No wonder that one has 14 million. Now we're going to dip into a slightly longer one because I think it is time for me to do the thing. What's the thing, Robert? Oh, oh I told you to stop talking, but here, I'll show you. Here it is. 
Here it is! Look at it! Look at it! I no longer care for sports. No ice cream, Andy. Why? This one is an 11 minute slapperino. I'm really excited for this. I can only imagine the amount of goofery that can take place in an 11 minute ice cream sandwich video about sports. But I'm stoked. I busted out the Sammy. Let's go. Three, two, Ichi, go. Uh -huh. Yeah, got him. You did good. If you're anything like me, you don't like sports. I go get the ball? You just threw it, you go get it. I feel like if I was better at sports, I'd like them more, but I am not good at sports. If you're to look at my history with sports, you will see that my performance, it is bad. Yo, catch! I don't really like watching sports either, but I do understand there's a little crossover with what constitutes as a good time. Snacks, hanging with the boys, <laughs> balls. I can see the appeal, it's just not my thing. For me, personally, I do other stuff for fun. Ooh, ice. What on earth? What on earth is- <laughs> He's making potions! Give it a good stir. Is he memeing? Or are these the kind of games that ice cream sandwiches into? Sip? You want to taste? You like it? Oh yeah. Wait, is this really? Is this a sponsor? Is he? Is this is really the type of games you play? Hey, different people like different games. Personally, I would rather play sports than play this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Andy. I don't love sports, but I definitely don't love a game like this. Anyways, sorry. We'll we'll continue with that later. The other thing I like to do for fun is learn things online indiscriminately. Well, there's no easy way to say this, so. I am sponsored by Snash Ashley. Okay, there was a sponsored segment, but it had nothing to do with the potion mixing. All right, yeah, I I, I can't show his ad in my video, so I'm, I gotta skip. And also guys, make sure you are subscribed to Ice Cream Sandwich. If you aren't already subscribed to him, once this video is over, make sure you subscribe to Andy, because these videos are amazing, and it is all thanks to him. Okay, so the first sport I ever went out for was basketball. Half court! My no! dad signed me up through the local YMCA, and every practice session was everybody just throwing basketballs <laughs> at the hoop for like an hour, and I was really not good at it. In fact, the entire time I played basketball, I never made a single shot, except for one time. We were playing some game against a much better team who continuously scored on us. I hardly ever got the ball because everybody knew that I could not handle that. Oh, dude, honestly, so relatable. I played YMCA basketball as well. Now now I want to know for sure, Andy, are you actually tall? I don't know if he's actually tall. He talked about being tall in the last video, but being short and playing basketball and having anxiety is a bad combination. I was actually good at shooting. In practices, I had a good jump. I could hit threes. I could hit foul shots. Like I wasn't amazing, but like if I got comfortable with a ball, I was pretty good. But in a game, I was not good. I could not like, I don't know. I just like, I could run super fast, but like I, when I got the ball, I just felt like I couldn't do enough. Like I, I just immediately passed it. So I didn't score in games, but I could score normally. But yeah, you can't handle the pressure. It's scary. Exactly what you're saying is correct. But in this game, I was in a really advantageous position and someone tossed the ball to me. And there was my shot wide open. And you I got took this. it. You got and this. And I made it. I was so happy for my first score. And then we lost the game. I have made no significant difference on the outcome. And then I got a medal. I do not know how that works out, but it was fun. I got so much dopamine in that moment that it seared a memory into my brain. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I'll always remember that moment. I don't know how I feel about giving kids medals for losing. I don't know if it's really good for mental development, but it does feel good. After mm -hmm. a certain amount of time, I stopped playing basketball and started playing baseball instead. At this point, I was a little older and I had marginally improved on my hand-eye coordination. 
Good job, Andy. I think baseball requires a lot more hand-eye coordination than basketball. So baseball was my first sport. I started playing it when I was four. And I played for probably like 10 years. I think I stopped at around like 14, 15. And then I played basketball from like nine to maybe 13, something like that. And yeah, in terms of hand-eye coordination to like a fine degree, you can say what you will about baseball because I don't think it's the most athletic sport out there. You know, hence like there's a lot of people who succeed at the highest level who aren't in good like running shape. But the hand-eye coordination, you, you gotta be clean with it. Oh, I mean, yeah. you do in basketball too, but I think throwing a baseball like across the field right to the homie's glove, I think is harder to do than making a basketball shot. That's just me personally. I was a little older and I had marginally improved on my hand-eye coordination. So I could take baseball a little bit more seriously. And this time I was on a team with my friends, which was awesome. It made playing the game way more fun. There was a snack bar at the place that we played games at. So we could always go and get like big league chew. And this is not interesting at all, but the nostalgia I get while looking at this product is <laughs> helpful. It's potent, it's pungent. Ugh, big league chew is so good. Actually, hold on, Amazon. <laughs> get that chew. big league chew. There it is. I can get a pack of five for eight bucks? There's a bucket? Dude, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I never ate Big League Chew, bro. I never ate Big League Chew. That seems like such an American thing. Big League Chew. Wow, but people are still out here buying it. Isn't that crazy? That candies from like adults' childhood can stay alive just because adults are like, yeah, I still want to eat the candy from when I was a kid, even though no one eats it now. People do eat it now because all these adults are like, yeah, I'm just going to keep buying it. That's crazy. I'm surprised this is still a thing. Economics. But yeah, baseball, I was also very bad at this game. I might have been older. I might have had better hand-eye coordination, but I was still bad at throwing, pitching, It's hitting. hard. You could just generalize it and say that I was bad at the whole game, and you'd be right. I remember playing this one game where the ball landed right next to me. All I needed to do was pick up the ball and toss it. But while it's I was hard. trying to pick it up, I wasn't looking at my hands. I was oh. looking at the runner, just rounding oh, the bases. No. And I kept missing while Give I was picking it up. So I was just looking at the dude taking all the bases Home while run. I was crouching over looking like a dumb idiot. And then I run. looked down and saw that I was missing it picked it up and tossed it, but the runner got a home run by the time I threw it. Oh no. An in the park home run. You have to mess up pretty bad. I'll explain it to anyone who isn't super familiar with baseball. Yeah, so most of the time when someone gets a home run, it's because they knocked it out of the park. If you can knock it out of the park, that is a home run. That's how like 90% of a home runs happen. But if you hit it and it just goes to the perfect nope. spot to where it takes a while for the other team to get to it, and then they keep throwing it to their teammates, but they just keep messing up and can't get it in fast enough. You can get a home run then and there just by hitting all the bases. Getting an in the park home run on a professional level is like humiliating because nobody should be able to let that happen. But as a kid, like that does happen just because kids aren't amazing at sports, obviously. But an in the park home run solely caused by you, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's rough. That's rough. Probably why you still remember it. Guess who was mad at me for that one? Coach. The whole team. If that doesn't sound that bad, trust me when I say it looked way worse if you watched it play out. Whew, tough inning. I'm gonna go get some more Big League Chew. I'm out of the old Chew. <laughs> Gotta, all right. I was bad and everybody knew it including me. They even yelled at me to not throw the ball when I got it because it usually meant someone was going to get another base, if not an entire home run, because I would just miss all of the time. Except for there was one time when I shot everybody up. We were playing a game and we needed one more out to win. I was shortstop at the time, which is right here, and the ball was hit right to me. I picked it up and everybody was telling me, don't throw it, just we'll get him out on the next hit. But I didn't listen. Instinct seeped into my brain. I was all animal. That was loud. I got the out. The whole team was shocked, including myself. And it was the complete opposite of the basketball game because that throw won the game for us. Yay! I mean, it wasn't a really impressive throw, but when you take the worst player of the game and you get an out, it's a little bit cool. Everybody was freaking out. And they, everybody did that thing where they came up to me and they hit me in the head because they were like, good job. I don't get that in sports where they just hit you and spank you, but it is a form of endearment. So it felt very good to be congratulated.
expected. Okay, I'm glad that Andy did get to experience that at some point. That is important as well. Those feelings in baseball are great. When you get the winning out, that is the best. But a lot of that, some of that story, guys, I it did get me thinking about the one time that my team wasn't in the championship game, but we were in like the runner up game. So it's like the two teams who lost the semifinals face each other for third place. And my team was up for like most of the game. And then in like, we just needed to, to, to not let them score. And we just kept making errors that have, like we kept missing the like final out to win the game. Like it was, it would have been like a walk-off, right? So if we caught the ball, we, the game's over. And yeah, I had one of those opportunities. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was short stuff. No, I was second base. I was second base between first base and second base. The ball, I remember it came like right over me. It wasn't far back enough to where it should have gone to the outfielder, but it was like far back enough that there's like no way for me to catch it. It was like the perfect pop-up where I was like doing that, but I just wasn't far back enough. And so it just went behind me and they got like two bases and a run and yeah. But that catch, if I had made it, we would have won the bronze and we ended up not winning the bronze. So that's lame. There were other games where I did win the game by like catching the hits. And that's so satisfying. It's like the final opportunity. Like you can end the game just by getting one more out. Guy hits it, it goes like straight to your glove. Boom, peace. Game over. That, that's the best feeling ever. Like, pop, boom. Okay, peace. You know, you, you catch it and then just you start walking in because it's like, yeah, I won. Sorry, guys. It's like you call the game. It's like when a fighter gets a one-shot knockout and walks away as the person's falling because they know it's over. It's like, oh, it's not quite as cool. <laughs> the baseball thing isn't quite as cool, but still really cool. In and out, he does the big oh! So it felt very good to be congratulated. That was the coolest play in baseball that I've ever made. And I'll always remember it because all my other memories of playing baseball were really embarrassing. So I guess I get why people like sports. It's exciting when things go good. It's just that things don't go good for me a lot when it comes Aww. to that. This is kind of irrelevant, but I was thinking about when I was playing baseball. And I remember this time that there was this kid that we were playing against who was pitching and he had been hitting every person that Ow. went up to bat. And then I went up to bat. I could see that he was really upset. And then he threw the ball and he hit me. And I was like, hey, I don't have to walk. I can just, he can pitch again. I didn't think that hurt at all. And then the ref was like, nope, you have to go. And I was like, okay. Dumb. And I walked to first base and I saw them crying. I just felt really bad because... I know what it's like to suck. <laughs> doing okay today. If by some random chance of luck that you're out there watching this right now, just know that you're not alone. It's okay to suck. I suck every day. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Yo, that's also so relatable. Yo, people who, who didn't play baseball regularly don't know these feelings. So your boy, Robert Eddie K, dropping some baseball knowledge right now. So yeah, if the pitcher hits the batter with the ball, if they like don't throw it in the strike center doll and they hit the batter, the batter gets to walk to first base automatically. And so if you keep doing that, they're just gonna keep scoring points. They're just gonna keep scoring if you keep hitting them. Not not only that, but for the most part, kids are not trying to hit other players with pitches. They're just tr literally trying to pitch it properly. When professional baseball players, like adults, when they hit the batter, a lot of the time it's intentional because they're so good, right? They can throw the ball wherever they want, but a kid is just trying to get it over the plate. So this kid was crying because they couldn't help it. They just kept hurting people by throwing their pitches wrong. I know that feel. Like kids is crying. I do also remember kids crying when getting hit with a pitch. Bruh. I mean, I know it can hurt sometimes, but seriously, dude. I thought I was a wimp, but there are much there are much bigger wimps than me. I did make one kid cry from hitting him with the ball, but dude, come on. Like, I don't know, guys. This is me. Just it's not it doesn't hurt that much, okay? You don't need to cry. Have you ever seen an adult baseball player cry when getting hit by a pitch and they're getting hit by a 90 mile an hour? And then after a certain amount of time, baseball was done. And then I moved on to track and field, which was really fun because it's easy. You have to do one thing. <laughs> Run. I like track and field because <laughs> I consider myself at the time to be pretty quick. I am speed. 
I definitely wasn't the fastest, but I still prided myself on my ability to run. There's no missing the ball on the ground or throwing a ball at a hoop. It's just run. And that I could do. Nothing really interesting happened when I played track and field, just because it is very simple. Look at him run. Yeah. That very that cool. Fast. But it was one of the sports I did. There was one day that I became really dehydrated that all I could see was white. Hey, did it seem really bright out here to you guys? But that's less about the sport, more about me being dehydrated. That's <laughs> happened to me. I'm surprised I'm alive these days. Anyway, and then I tried cross-country skiing, but that one was the worst because despite everybody's best efforts, I couldn't do it. Every practice after school, we would go out to ski, everybody would be shimmying around, and then there would be me shuffling in place for hours. <laughs> You got this, Andy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what wasn't clicking, but I couldn't do it. After about a month, I ended up quitting. Breaking up with your girlfriend? That's hard. Beating Pogo stuck? It's really hard. Cross country skiing? <laughs> it's impossible. What a huge leap. Basketball, baseball, track and field. Okay, that's not feeling confident in these sports. And then trying cross country skiing, that's something else. Like Andy, was this your idea or was this, did you get pushed into this? Did a girl that you like do it? I tried out for some sports in school because a girl that I like was trying out for those same sports. But yeah, I mean, what an undertaking. Jumping to cross country skiing. Does you live in the mountains, bro? Sometimes I play golf, but never in a serious kind of way there was one time when i tried to play golf with a bunch of friends and it did not go well at all it wasn't supposed to go well because we were just like yeah it's golf we'll just hit it around and if we don't get the ball whatever but the way golf courses work is that they want to very efficiently have everybody moving yep. along from yep. one hole to the next so there's not a lot of people waiting because a bunch of goofballs want to have a good time so they took me and another friend and they paired us up with some random people that we just didn't know they're really nice and they were like it's your first time golfing and we're like oh, yeah i mean we've golfed before but we don't you know we're not too good <laughs> and we proceeded to hit every shot into the rough oh, and they're being no. really nice and saying oh it's okay you know you can you can try again Aww. and eventually they just stopped talking to us because we were so bad it kind of ruined the vibe it was really embarrassing to be that bad but in the end we met up with our other friends that already finished the course and we got a couple golf carts and they just raced around to them which is not allowed i think it made it worth it that was a good memory of mine yeah i understand that being a consolation uh i can't really recommend to my audience uh, to race around in golf carts. I can't recommend that. That is uh, not allowed by the rules of 99.9% .9 of golf courses. But I did golf for many years as well. Guys, are you noticing a trend? My dad made me play like every sport growing up. And I'm sorry, dad. I hope you enjoyed it while it lasted because now I'm a huge nerd. But yeah, when you're having a bad day in golf, it is not fun. It is not fun. Especially when you are like holding up the other people. Because yeah, what he's talking about is is, is for real. If you, if the average team group gets through a hole in like seven minutes, but then you and your friends are really bad and you take 20 minutes, if someone catches up to you and then has to wait an extra like 10 minutes every hole, that is the worst. That's why a lot of people like let people play ahead of them if they're catching up too much so that they don't have to do that. Cause yeah, that's a, a super awkward experience. So I've had my fill of sports, not my thing. Totally understand why people like it, but uh, I draw a cartoon. Not to play sport. Artists <laughs> don't want to move. They just want to sit and draw. I have carpal tunnel. So that's on playing sports, <laughs> but watching them, you know, you don't have to be good. You can just watch it, right? Not True. for me. Oh my oh. god, the amount of things that people have to remember. I'm amazed at people's ability to just know who's who, the rules, how well they've been performing. How do you keep up with all of that information? Oh, Billy Bobby Jimmy Johnny got three kickies into the goal just Ooh. last round. Oh. He's been doing pretty good this season. What? Who is this guy? And then they changed teams. They were just like swapping them around. That's so much data. I forgot what I ate for breakfast. Or if I even ate breakfast. Oh, this mm -hmm. is way too much. I don't really watch sports or go out to games. I do like going to the stadium sometimes because the food is yummy. The you can just sit in the sun and enjoy a hot dog. It's like a comfortable thing. Being there to watch the game, eh, take me out of the ball game. More like 
Take me home. Yeah, that is a good experience, honestly. Going to a sports game, eating a hot dog in the crowd, like, that was a good vibe. Yeah, my dad, I'm so sorry, dad. I'm glad he's proud of me now, because boy, did I disappoint him in terms of sports. Boy, did I disappoint him. Like, I'm fit, and that's cool, but, like, I don't play any of the sports, the Deluxe, no more. And what Andy's saying makes total sense. People who remember, like, millions and millions of little sports facts. It's like, I never understood that. I never understood that until I started watching the UFC. UFC stats and fighters? I have an encyclopedia in my head. An absolute encyclopedia. I know so much about anything that's happened in the UFC in the last, like, seven or eight years that I've been watching. It's wow. absurd. I didn't know my brain could hold that much information. But yeah, if someone likes a sport that much, that's just what ends up happening. I love hockey as a Canadian. I play hockey for a long time. I love hockey. Of course, I know all the rules of all these things, but like nothing captures my attention and is as impactful for me as the UFC. So in the end, uh, sports are good. Just not for me. Thank you for watching. Ah! Oh no, that's so sad. I can't believe he was a hero. I can't believe that happened. I talked to him before this happened and he said, his last message that you smash that subscribe button. Way ahead of you, my dude, but I'll boop that like button for you, of course. Oh, Bryson chimed in. Take my hand, Andy, and together we will rule the land of anti-sports sentiment. Well, you don't have to dig sports, but sports are okay, guys. <laughs> I think I probably had a good childhood because I was such a nerd. I still am a massive gargantuan-sized nerd, but it's probably a good thing that my dad made me play so many sports because my giant gargantuan gargantuan nerdness got balanced by having to play so many sports that like I, pr I probably turned out okay you know that's probably the only reason why I'm even remotely in shape to this day you know you know what I'm saying sorry I haven't listen I haven't shown my abs in like a year on this channel just let if you don't know now you know and we are gonna crush one more quick one this video has been so much fun I can't wait for this last one I think it's gonna be great let's just have some fun before I send you off to another video homies I usually try and save spiders Kermit I have never seen you around a spider ever um well guess what Robert at the ponds and the swamp there are plenty of spiders so I see them all the time. Okay, but you're you're always here. I've never seen you with a spider. Well, you're just gonna have to trust me that I usually try to save them. I always I do it all the time. Kermit, I think that might be some cap. I think that might be some Kermit cap, people. Are you kidding me? You think that's some Kermit cap? It might be some <laughs> Kermit cap, brother. Kermit cap! <laughs> Guys, do you think Kermit's spitting facts or spitting some cap? You let me know in the comments below, okay? Robert, I think you should just shut up and play the video. Okay, fine. <gasps> it's the warm Jeez. season. That means bugs are back out. For bugs, it's the time to thrive and do bug type stuff. For us, it's time we get to enjoy the sun and also be thankful that I don't live ah! in Australia. Spiders are not easy to calmly deal with. Oh no, I gotta see that one more time. That was the worst. The oh sun, my gosh, that's my worst nightmare. That I don't live in Australia. Spiders oh. are not easy to calmly deal with. Even if you do not live in Australia, where they're 10 times the size of a small child. They're freaky and scary. This is no secret. I'm totally on the same page. I don't think I could ever muster up enough courage to hold one in my hand or let one crawl on my arm like they do to help people who have fear of spiders get over their fear of spiders. Oof. Even like a daddy long legs, Oof. which aren't harmful to humans and generally passive. Also, not even a spider, apparently. I wouldn't touch them. No, thank you. I don't like those daddy long- Leah, thanks for the nice close-up picture, dude. See, I, if I see a daddy long legs, I'm gonna try to save it. Okay, Kermit, you you do you, bud. Yeah, I'm sure you're, you're not gonna eat it. Eat it? What do you think I am? Some kind of, uh, frog? Yeah, yes, actually, that's exactly what I, what I think you are. Unbelievable. But despite my fear, I try my best to keep the balance of nature and will usually capture and release a spider when I see one indoors. It's not an easy thing to do, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And it's for the better. Because now birds can eat them. Yay! And frogs! Oh, I got you! No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding! But I'm no total saint. Uh, I used to go to a friend's cabin a lot in the summer to engage in summer-type activities. 
canoeing and fishing and stuff like that. It's way up Love in that. northern Minnesota, right next to the Boundary Waters. So raw nature kind of place. It takes hours to get there, but the trip was always fun because I was with good friends. Lots of good memories there. I miss that cabin. Now, I say cabin, but I really mean like a lake house. It was a really nice place. But when my brain sees a structure next to some water in a woodsy area, my knee-jerk reaction is to call it a cabin. So I'm okay. going to just keep doing that. Okay. Cool. So this cabin was really nice. You do you, Andy. You do you. If I think of a water tower near some woods and whatnot, I call that the setting of a horror film. Oh yeah, Robert, you never lived in a small town before? In the woods? Uh, not a small town in the woods. I've lived in towns though. Well, you should know the water tower doesn't necessarily mean it's from a movie. All right, I don't think you're physically fit to film this video, Kermit. You're acting kind of weird today. So this cabin was really nice. Everything you needed there, temperature control, electricity, running water, full kitchen. The only thing that was somewhat lacking was pest control, specifically the bug kind. This particular Ooh. summer, we had just gotten to the cabin. And we're bringing our stuff inside from the cars, claiming who gets what bed and what room, stocking the bathrooms and kitchen with supplies for the week, when suddenly, wow, that's a big spider. Oh my god, that, <laughs> this big old beaver spider shows up and just completely stops all unpacking. Here's the yep. current layout of the situation. Yep. There's a hallway here, yep. a doorway here, a spider here, and we are all here. Yep. Bedrooms where we're unpacking stuff are over here, and literally everything else to the house is this way. So you can see we were in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> the layout of the house required us to pass through a specific doorway that the spider was specifically in front of blocking everybody, and being generally terrifying. If I had to guess what spider it was, I would say wolf spider. The as big oh. as your hand slash big enough to eat a bird if you felt like it kind. And because oh. of that, nobody wanted to even get close to it. I'm a catch and release kind of guy, but not a catch and release at the expense of my arm kind of guy. <laughs> so we had this problem that was affecting everybody as zero people who wanted to deal with it. I am so jealous of anyone who grew up without arachnophobia. I talked about this in a video a while ago. It might have been the second Odd Ones Out video. This video right here, where we watched the Odd Ones Out talk about the spiders and the bees, and we talked about spiders. So I won't go into too much detail. Make sure you watch that one after this if you haven't seen it. But yeah, I'm really jealous of people who didn't grow up with arachnophobia because yeah, the weird thing about like spiders and bees is that like the average spider, at least like, in America, the average spider doesn't really pose a threat to you. But like wasps and hornets and stuff like that are much more likely to pose a threat to you. But for some reason, the sight of a spider is so much more scary to the average human than just the sight of a hornet or a wasp. So there's some deep-rooted physiological DNA deep feelings about spiders that were imprinted in our ancestors that we still just have to live with even even though for the vast majority of us, a spider isn't a genuine threat. It's the worst. So I am very jealous of anyone who grew up without arachnophobia. And zero people who wanted to deal with it in an understandable way. Like, what if we try to kill it and we miss it, and then it scurries out of sight? Oh. Then we'd have even a worse problem. Good luck sleeping. Or if we do kill it oh, and no. we hit it with like oh, a broom, no. and then thousands of little baby oh, spiders no. came out, then oh, we'd have... No. Instead of a big problem, oh, a thousand no. smaller problems. Oh, no. Or if we try to catch... Ah! Andy, why would you put that in your video, bro? Why would you put that in your video? Oh, oh, Andy. No, Andy, no. Instead of a big problem, a thousand smaller problems. Or if we try to capture it and put it outside, it could jump on our faces. And then we would have a spider on our face problem. But thankfully I was there, and I didn't have the forethought to think of any of those situations. So I dove right in to solve the problem. I can't catch and release this spider. Even if I successfully got it outside, it's not like a bird would eat this thing. This thing would probably eat a bird. Think, Andy, think. Why is there a door there? Who would leave a door in the middle of the hallway? Wait a second. Spiders are smaller than doors. That means spiders are weak to doors. That means I'm not gonna I touch that now. Right it's too big. Oh, that's not it's a good idea. That. I have a I just hit it with the door. I have a family. Yeah.
I was the hero of the day. And as a reward, I didn't have to clean up the spider guts that was just splattered all over the floor and the door I just crushed it with. Uh, Woo. What happened to I usually try and save spiders, Andy? <laughs> you seem like you were saving yourself from the spider. See, you see right there? That's why things like this just make me kind of upset. I, you, I do try to save spiders. The fact that Andy would do that just kind of makes me sad. Kermit, what a weird position to take. Why did you decide to chime in about this? You clearly eat spiders. No, I don't eat spiders. I think you eat spiders, bro. I don't eat spiders. You do eat spiders. Oh, uh, look at the time. What time is it? Oh, I gotta go. Yeah. So after that problem was solved by genius boy Andy, we went back to unpacking and had a great rest of the trip. I love that place. A lot of good memories. Lots of good memories. There might be plans to go back there this summer, which I'm really quite excited for. Cool. More excited than that spider was big, which is... Oh my god, so much. Well, look what we have here. Another ice cream sandwich classic. And you know what that means. Here's the last two times we looked at ice cream sandwich. If you haven't seen both of the previous ice cream sandwich videos, make sure you are caught up. They are awesome. Here's the Odd Ones Out video I mentioned earlier. Make sure you have checked that out if you haven't seen it. And here is Andy's channel. He did all the hard work. Make sure you're subscribed to him. He is great. People, thank you for watching. Peace!